welcome to St. Paul the Sixth Parish. In accord with Archdiocesan directives, masks are now optional for all present. We would be grateful if you continue to receive communion in the hand, especially in consideration of those receiving immediately after you. Our presider at this mass is Father Matthew. Our deacon is Deacon Peter Brown. Our entrance hymn is number 487. Again, we keep this solemn fast, number 487. Please stand. <laughs> Pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy Moses spoke to the people, saying, the priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor on us. We cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders. And bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil which you, O Lord, have given me. 
and having set them before the Lord, your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Let us sing number 65, be with me, number 65. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall, not wor you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. There's an ultra-marathoner named David Goggins, and he's done a lot of other incredible things with his life. But the beginning of his life was not very easy. He had an abusive household, and eventually his mother and he went away. But as his mother struggled to provide for her family, she made sure that there were always some cookies in the cookie jar. It might change depending on what was on sale that week or change with what was available. But it was always her mission beyond everything else providing for her family that there would be cookies in that cookie jar. David Goggins took that as a great way of saying, I can create my own cookies by my accomplishments in life. By saying that he's able to run a marathon. He said, okay, I can put that cookie in my jar to say that I've done that great accomplishment so that when things get difficult, when things get very hard to do, he's able to say, oh, I've accomplished this. I'm able to, in a sense, eat that cookie from a previous experience to say that I've done this so I might be able to do that or I have that ability in myself to do those things that might be difficult. For us, it's in two ways that we're saying I'm able to build up those different ways or different cookies. I apologize for using cookies during Lent, but we were able to use that for our experiences of those accomplishments we are able to do and use those accomplishments in our life. It works another way, too, for those things that we didn't want to go through, but we're able to endure. We're able to use that as well. To say that this was a hardship that I didn't want to go through, but I was able, through the great grace of God, to go through it. And so I'm able to go through other hardships in life. And through that, too, we see that in the Gospel. That our Lord was able to endure a hardship of fasting for 40 days. That one day, accomplishment became two and became 40. That he had that in his endurance, as well as other temptations of the devil, that we only have three here, and we don't know if there were many other temptations that our Lord needed to go through or was put through. But again, he was able to take those great ways of endurance, those great ways of winning, in a sense, with himself, 
So he's able to use those in life. Likewise, we have the Israelites, that they were able to survive, again, 40 years in the desert. And once they were able to do that, they were able to look back on that, to say that the Lord was true to us in slavery, was true to us in the desert, was true to us in exile, and so forth. That it became that way of saying, I'm able to look in the past and receive those blessings to remind us that those blessings are able to continue in the presence. That is the way of Lent, that we're able to say, can I give myself a little endurance or a little task that I'm able to accomplish so that through those little things that I put upon myself, when something comes that is not of my own doing, I'm able to make the right decision. It is that way of building up virtue as well, that same aspect, to say that if I'm virtuous in that way of temperance, to say no to the thing that I might be giving up in Lent, I'm able to say no to something that I truly want, but that's bad for me, or those true uh, ways or wiles of the devil in our life that we can say no to that because I've said no before. Or in the other way, I've said yes to a good thing in my life, even though that decision was hard to make, so that I might say yes to an even greater decision when it comes forward. That way of virtue is one to create in our hearts a way that first is easy and then becomes effortless. And our Lenten journey reminds us of that, that our first decision on Ash Wednesday, whatever our practice would be, was difficult. Uh, Thursday, hopefully it became a little bit easier. On Friday, we forgot that we weren't supposed to eat meat and we tried to work that out too. But by next Friday, it's even easier to remind ourselves of that Lenten discipline and of that way, that that momentum truly helps us, as well as to say that we have those, in a sense, cookies in our jar to say, I was able to do it yesterday, so I'm able to do it today. My dear sisters and brothers, let's continually endure in that great way of Lent, but also know of the greatness that we are able to accomplish through the great grace of God. I'm sure we have so many experiences in our lives that the Lord was with us during that difficult time, or even things that we ourselves put uh, us through to say, I was able to endure that, I was able to take on this task, and I was able to accomplish it, again, through the great grace of God. Because the Lord is reminding us that nothing is impossible with the Lord, that we are able to endure 40 days or 40 years in the desert, that we're able to endure 40 days of Lent, but always with the Lord's help to build up so that things again become easy and then effortless in the mission towards the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, let us offer our profession of truth. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of the world, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us men who are our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was confronted with the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, Jesus was not held by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And he rose again on the third day in the corner of his prescriptions. He ascended to the heavens and he the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will come to the end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of your own life, who will see the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I run the Lord to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, confident that God hears us, let's place before God our prayers and our petitions. For the church, that it may help to satisfy the physical and spiritual hunger of all those around the world. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they work for peace and justice for all people, especially those in Ukraine and Russia. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry, that they may feel the grace of God through all those who donate, collect, distribute, or prepare food. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those preparing for the sacraments, that they may know our support and God's grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us, when we face temptation, May we turn to God for support and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering, especially John Chavez, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Flora Denini and Conrad Altz, and all the souls of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all the intentions in the prayer requests at the Mother of Mother's Shrine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For Luke Pfeiffer, Joan Walsh, and Donna Tudor, the intentions of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray too for Ron Grizak for healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for your own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers and grant them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please turn to number 480, Mercy O God, number 480.
brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of God's name, for our good and our holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In his glory and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to be thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our own Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpents, and by and taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the coming of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are planned. So that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Let me pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May it make us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul the Sixth, St. Hugh, and all the saints on whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as we pass into this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy for the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in this world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. That not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. Our first Lenten speaker is this Thursday, March 8th, at Mato Christi. Please join us at 7 o'clock as we hear from Dr. Mark Humo about journeying back home toward reconciliation with God and others. At 5 p.m., he will be speaking to our religious ed education and school students. 
and, and Simon will be speaking to the uh, everyone else. Come home for a bit. St. Paul VI is hosting a blood drive this Sunday, today, March 6th, in the Marion Room at Mater Christi worship site from 9.30 to 2.30 p.m. Details are in the bulletin. Please donate if you can. In honor of St. Joseph, we are collecting baby and personal hygiene items, as well as non-perishable food. Donations are being accepted at both churches, the Faith Formation Center, and the parish office until Palm Sunday, April 10th. The Women's Society and the Holy Name Society are meeting this week. Please check the website for details. The Holy Name Society will be raffling 35 Easter baskets on Sunday, April 10th. Baskets will contain items such as hams, chocolate, wine, and flowers. There will also be a split the pot. Please watch our website and bulletin for all the details. The St. Paul VI Lenten schedule is in the bulletin. We invite you to join us at Stations of the Cross Thursday evening mass or any one of the other Lenten opportunities. We invite you to come home for Lent. Please turn to page 481 uh, for our closing song, The Glory of These 40 Days, page 481. The Lord be with you. Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Amen.